What have we done? Torture? No! No! Why no! do you choose to touch her? No! Why do you choose to touch her? Huh? Why do you choose to touch her? Because it's what I do. Huh? It's what I do. Oh, it's what you do. How long have you been living in her? No. No! How long have you been living in her? Forever. What have you done to her career? What have you done to her career? You say what? She doesn't have one. What have you done to her marriage? She doesn't have one. Why? You don't want her to get married? <laughs> huh? No. No. How many of you are in this bed? <laughs> How many of you? <laughs> How many of you are in your body? Many. 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 Ah! What have we done to our family? Ah! I just destroy. You destroy. What are the evil you've done to this lady? I to torture and rape. I killed her many times, but she wouldn't die. You want her to die? I killed her many times, but she kept coming back to life. Now you have no place in her body. She belongs to Jesus. Leave her. Find him of Jesus Christ. No! No! Come on. No! Let us stand. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Find him of Jesus Christ all over your body. You have no place in her body. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you out of this body, you wicked demon. Come out of her. In the name of Jesus Christ. Powerless demon. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so first, can you please just tell us your name and where you're from? Zion Hidara from Kelowna, BC, Canada. So you mean to say you came here all the way from Canada to the Raise Deliver Conference, and from Canada you came here today? That's right, yes. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. So we know that in order for you to travel so far, in order for you to be able to come here and share your testimony, it must be a very powerful one. So we see from uh, the deliverance that took place that, some, that God Almighty has done something wonderful in your life. So we just want to know from you, what was the problem that you were having before and the things in your life that uh, you were facing that led you up into this point of deliverance? Well, when I was young, a little girl, around three, I had a lot of sexual abuse, sexual um, grooming, and a lot of other things that I don't need to mention. But it basically, it ruined my life. And by the age of six, I completely shut my heart down. I became completely numb. I didn't care about anyone or anything. I didn't care if everyone I knew died. Um, even animals meant nothing to me. And I was full of anger, hatred, rage. Um, I was anorexic. I was bulimic. I binged. I had tremendous fear of people. I was very, very like shy and quiet and kept to myself, always out riding the horses, doing my own thing. And then as time went on, the emotions started coming up around 21, I think, about 10 years ago. And the emotions started coming up and just tremendous pain, tremendous agony, um, repressed memories that I hadn't remembered started coming up. And it was absolutely unbearable. Like I couldn't handle life at all. It was just, and I tried many things. Um, I was with a pastor who tried to help me for a number of years, and he ended up taking me to the psych ward at the hospital for a while, and they gave me medication, and nothing helped. Um, I did many Christian counts, counseling, eating disorder clinics, um, like list, thing after thing after thing I tried, and it was just agony. I just, I was desperate, and I just kept pressing into God. That was my, my only thing was pressing into God all the time, praying in tongues, pressing into his presence, loving on him, just, it was him and only him. 
but nothing helped. It was just always tremendous agony. And so what led you to the point of your deliverance? Well, my friends, the reason I came to Hungry Generation is because my friends wanted to come and they knew a lot about the ministry and deliverance. And I had gotten some deliverance in the past, but I was in such a cycle of pain that um, I kept falling backwards. I kept going backwards to just it didn't help. The deliverance that I had gotten didn't help. I wasn't Maybe I wasn't ready for it. I don't know, but I'm sure something happened when I got it, but it just there was no answer. And my friends wanted to come to Hungry Generation. So by this point, I, was, I had been so disappointed so many times by putting my hopes up, going somewhere to get help, and it not helping that, honestly, I just came for the road trip. I didn't come for, I didn't have any expectations because I, I was, I had been disappointed so many times that I've learned not to get hope, my hopes up because you just get crushed. So I came for the road trip, and it was a fun road trip. We had a good time. <laughs> and I also knew that God is faithful. He is true. And I know, knew that I knew I would be completely free from everything at some point, and it was getting greater and greater my freedom. So I knew that God could do something, and I'm sure he would do something, but I wasn't going to hope for it because it would hurt too much. And then when I came here in the Friday evening, I remember I was, there was so much terror inside of me. It was like my friend, she's like, I haven't seen you this way in a long, long time. I was so agitated, and I knew that it was demonic. I knew it wasn't me. And in the past, one of the pastors had told me, oh, it's just it's all in your mind. It's in your thoughts. And I was like, okay, so I'm just, I have to change my thinking or something. I don't know. So I would try and change my thinking. I would pray in tongues for 10 hours a day. I would read the word. I'd do everything, decree the word for, like, probably in total every day, I'd be pressing into God about 12 hours, and nothing seemed to help. And so I came here, and I got prayer from John, Apostle John Chi, and I just remember whatever it was just taking me over. Like, I, I, didn't, I couldn't control my body or what I said or my emotions, and just horrible emotional pain came up horrible emotional pain that I couldn't stand. I remember just crying and crying and just, I just wanted to die. I just wanted to die. I've had that many times in the past, but I haven't felt that for a while. So I was like, where is this coming from? I thought it was gone. I thought I'd overcome this, but it was still there. And then when John Chi finished praying for me, I, we left back to Canada and I remember I just felt horrible. I remember we were driving and I just was sobbing and sobbing and I felt so awful. And I was like, the same thing as usual happened. I'm leaving in a ton of agony and it didn't help and what's the point of living? And, but after about an hour, or half an hour of driving, I remember there's this peace, this incredible peace started just taking me over. And I, I remember just, I'd, st I'd, I'd stopped crying and I was just soaking in that peace and it was so incredible. And then as the days went on, um, I remember, I think it was the day after I got home, I was just sitting on my bed, soaking in the presence of God, and my body was just so relaxed. It was so relaxed. And someone said to me, like, I haven't seen you this relaxed ever. You've, you've never been this relaxed. And then another person said to me, oh, you've grown so much. And I was like, in height? And they're like, no, it was spiritual growth. And I was like, you noticed. So, and then I also noticed when I looked in the mirror, there used to be this hardness in my eyes, this, like, not caring about anything, this arrow arrogance and pride and when I looked this time there was this incredible gentleness and love and I was like who is that person like what is this and because people in the past um, a certain church had even given up on me they said oh she's a hopeless case and a lot of churches they just they just couldn't help me even though they tried so since going to the conference I've I've noticed a lot of changes and it's wonderful it's like I'm and also there's a lot of repressed memories coming up um, since then, and I've gotten inner healing. Before the conference, I was getting inner healing from a lady, and after the conference, I continued in that, and I felt like when the demonic left, I felt like um, like some kind of chains were broken, things that I'd tried in the past that hadn't worked. It's like now whatever it was left, and then the same things started working more and more. The same, the same, decreeing the word, praying in tongues. I could be in God's presence in just like that, five minutes, before it took seven hours, now five minutes. And just, and in God's presence, everything changes. It's like in his presence is fullness of joy. In his presence, the enemy perishes in the presence of God. So just soaking in that presence, I'm like, oh my gosh, like this new joy, new happiness and hope that I've never felt in my life is just coming alive. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus.
so Zion, you mean to say that all of that, that praying that you did before that felt like you were hitting a wall, you could never break through and all of those oppressed memories from your past and everything, it was like you couldn't break through. But as soon as that, that chain was broken in your life, after you received that prayer from Apostle John Chi, now, now as you began to pray, you were, be, you were able to break through, you were able to get that healing that you had been seeking for? Yes, it's coming quicker and quicker now. Like before the conference at Hungry Generation, um, I was seeing some results in myself. I was seeing a new contentment, um, some peace, but I fought for it tooth and nail every day, 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day. I fought for peace. And now I don't have to fight nearly as hard. I'm seeing things happen a lot quicker, um, just, just sudden, suddenly, suddenly. And a lot of emotional pain still does come up, but it's because God's presence is pushing it out. He's releasing it, and I'm getting more and more freedom. So it's a good. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Amen. Zion, we know that your testimony is really important for people who are here today who are seeking the same kind of thing that you are looking for, that freedom from uh, demonic bondage. So what kind of advice can you give to them uh, in order to encourage their faith? First and foremost, God is your answer. Press into him with all your heart. Like, press into him, decree the word, pray in tongues, and he will line up events. Like, for me, he lined up me coming for a hungry generation because he knew it was an answer. He knew deliverance was a key for me that I needed. He knew that healing would happen there. So, pressing into God, and even when you feel like you're moving steps backwards, like if you get prayer for deliverance and you start crying or you feel like a lot of pain and you leave in a lot of pain, that's actually a step forward because that pain is leaving you. God's presence, God's faithfulness, he's pushing that pain out and you're releasing it once and for all and you're gonna walk in new levels of freedom you never knew. So press into God and he will line up events in your life that will be greater and greater freedom. And coming here for deliverance and healing, that was a major answer in my life. Amen, let's put our hands together one more time for wonderful Jesus.